Welcome back to me screaming. It's been a month since my last video on what makes it scary. That was the first video of the series, and that was the back rooms. This one is going to be of the Walton Files. We will get deeper and deeper, I think, into weird, random videos on the internet, but the Walton Files was really, really popular. I think it was last year, maybe even 2020. So yeah, we're going to be delving into the Walton Files and figuring out why we feel so uncomfortable when watching it, and what makes it so scary. We're going to be focusing on one specific part of the first video. Without further ado, this is the clip that we will be analyzing. It's a brand new day in Little Bond's neighborhood, and a really special one for sure. Little Bon has been waiting all day for his friends to arrive. He is planning to have a sleepover with them, he has everything set up for the perfect movie night with his friends. For this sleepover, he invited Shah, Boozoo, and Billy. Let's check again in case we don't forget any guests. Bon invited Shah, Bozu, and Oh, that must be them. Now that everyone has arrived, I suppose it's time for the movie night to begin. Bond spent all his money on a really funny movie, which he hoped and friends watched the movie. I guess we can say they had a blast of a time. Once the night dropped, they all ate. Now that we're all absolutely terrified by that jump scare, we can begin! <laughs> First let's look at what style it's in. Clearly it's a videotape style which gives it the feeling of nostalgia or being a child. This gives you this false sense of comfort or security but at the same time making it eerie. So naturally we're gonna feel quite vulnerable when seeing stuff like this because it does remind us of when we were younger. Or some of us. <laughs> Not sure if everyone had these when they were small. And because it's in the style of a videotape, some may actually question if it's real or not. Is this from a real franchise? Is this a real introductory tape? This could be some found footage from a really, really old franchise that's completely unheard of now. Uh, obviously, it's not, <laughs> but it has the potential to be, and that just adds to the creepiness of it all. Next part to mention is the unnatural voiceover. It's very Uncanny Valley-like, uh, and if you don't know what Uncanny Valley means, the definition is used in reference to the phenomenon whereby a computer-generated figure or humanoid robot bearing a near-identical resemblance to a human being arouses a sense of unease or revulsion in the person viewing it. How I see it is kind of like, it isn't human, but it kind of is is and then that freaks us out in very basic terms. <laughs> 
going back to the childlikeness of it all it's a childlike cartoon and going into the actual visual aspects of it it's got harsh shading awkward shapes and although this is very subtle it's definitely there to make us feel uncomfortable during the video we have long disjointed breaks that open up the door to jump scares so we're constantly on the edge of our seat or leaning very far back in our seats depending on who you are when it comes to jump scares <laughs> The contrast from cartoon to Jack, it's very, very jarring and very freaky. It's completely because he's not meant to be there, ultimately. It feels like something that you were enjoying, maybe, <laughs> as a child, has been hacked into and altered in a malicious way. This is then followed by the distorted voice, unexplained photos. Again, like something's been hacked, something's not meant to be there. You have no idea what you're going to be shown in the next few seconds. And also tying into the long disjointed breaks, we have unsettling silence and eerie imagery. And then finally, the jump scare. To achieve the tinny voice aspect and the kind of distortedness of it, I went to a text-to-speech website which looked a little bit dodgy to say the least and just pasted the dialogue into there. And this is something I completely forgot to record but to get the realistic image of one of my characters I had to go on Art Breeder and then just kind of fiddle around with that and then to have the black and white effect I just filled a canvas full of black and then set that to colour and then did f filled another canvas with black and then set that one to overlay and you can just kind of mess around with that. Obviously you can change the settings of the image but I wanted to keep it all in one save. I probably made it more complicated than it had to be but that's just what I did.
the sun is going to bed, and so are the birds in their nests. Jimmy is also getting ready to have a nice sleep. Jimmy has brushed his teeth, put on his pajamas, kissed his brother goodnight and is about to read a story. Let's go through that again so we make sure we haven't missed anything. Jimmy has brushed his teeth, put on his pajamas, kissed his brother goodnight and... Good boy, Jimmy. You're already in bed. What book is that, Jimmy? Oh yes, that's your favorite. Night night, Jimmy. See you again soon. And that is, I guess, what makes Walton Files scary. <laughs> that is the recreation of the Walton Files. I'm sure I didn't get it exactly and, like, you know, hit all of the aspects of horror. I could not figure out for the life of me how to distort images in the way that Jack Walton is distorted in the missing poster. I feel like that would take some more advanced editing knowledge that I currently don't have. But yeah, I really hope you liked this video and I really hope you liked the recreation. And I also really hope that you found it useful. If you're going in that direction with that kind of horror, then maybe you can put some of the tools that we found in this video to use and you can kind of create your own version of it. Obviously a original, of course, <laughs> not like that. That was actually a recreation, but with my own character's backstory. But yeah, thank you everyone for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much to my patrons. I'm working towards making art my full-time career, so supporting me on Patreon would really, really help that. And by supporting me, you'll also get work in progresses behind the scenes, be able to take part in art requests and lots of other stuff like that. So thank you so much. And if you're unable to do that, then just liking the video and or leaving a comment is just as amazing. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it.